Do you think that Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic could offer so much to your child? Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, that's the way of the future. We have a hundred percent student graduation rate. 45% of our student population is not Dominican. 34 different nationalities represented in our student population. There's a Dominican expression that uh, one who doesn't eat doesn't think. I, I know every single kid's name and, and, and yes. can greet them by name as they come in the door. Once a Marlin, always, always a, Marlin. a Marlin. Yes. Hi everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Punta Cana podcast. My name is Cheryl Henderson, your guide to Punta Cana living. And today I'm very excited to have a guest here who will answer a question that I get all the time, literally all the time from everyone is, how is the education in the Dominican Republic? Can my kids go to school here and get a good education? So without further ado, I would like to present Dr. Daniel Garvey, who is the head of school for the Cap Cana Heritage School here in Punta Cana. Also the school where my children have gone and I have been a parent at that school since 2007 count the years, a lot of years. <laughs> One of the founding <laughs> parents of the school uh, in Cap Cana Heritage School. I'm so happy to have you here with us today, Dr. Garvey. Thank you very much for the invitation. We're so happy to have you as a mom at the school and, and, and grateful to be here to be able to talk about uh, living and, and working and education here in, in Punta Cana. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm always really proud to tell everyone that the director, the head of school is an American from the United States, an expat. So tell us a little bit of your background. Where are you from? I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio, born and raised in, in Cleveland, went to university in, in Columbus, Ohio, moved to down south to Mississippi, uh, where, I was, where I began my teaching career before coming here to the Dominican Republic. Uh, but I've lived here actually since 2012. I first wow. came down in 2011 and moved here in 2012. So going on uh, 12 years of living and, and working here in the DR. That's amazing. And you've been in the education system, in the Dominican education system that entire time? Tell I us have. I, I have had experience both in the U.S. Uh, system as well as the, the Dominican education system as both a teacher and an administrator. So that's given me some great perspective into both, you know, how, how both systems operate and the strengths and advantages uh, that both of them have. But all of my time here since 2012, I've been working first as a teacher, and then uh, I'm actually finishing my 10th year now as, uh, as a head of school. School. Two different schools, but but ten years total here. This year will be my will be my tenth. So excited uh, for what have been those past ten years, and looking forward to what comes next. Wow! And he is a head of school, and look at how excited he is to talk yeah. about what you do and the education and the school. Tell us about yeah. the school, Cap Cana Heritage School. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that our school is here necessarily. Capcana Heritage School was founded in 2007, as you know, as one of our uh, founding mothers. But Capcana Heritage School is a pre-K all the way to 12th grade school. We start receiving students as young as, as one. Uh, when, when they can walk and, and they're ready to come into school, we will, um, we will receive them. Uh, and we go all the way up to, to 12th grade. And have an, when we say we have an American-type curriculum, what that essentially means is, is that all of our classes are taught in English, in the English language, with the exception of Spanish class and social studies class, uh, which is sociales, which is what has to be taught here in the Dominican Republic in Spanish. Yes. But all of our students take their, their classes, their special classes during the day. All of their core content is taught in English, and we follow an American curriculum. So the wonderful thing to your viewers out there that are looking at the possibility of relocating to Punta Cana is it allows the flexibility for their children to be educated here and then if at some point they go back to the United States they're going to be able to insert into the US system no problem because all of the the grades and the classes that they've done have been following the same scope and sequence of what they would see in the United States so it allows for a lot of flexibility and then for students who are with us all the way to 12th grade and and, and go on to university we have a hundred percent student graduation rate which we're very proud of Woo! all of our students go on to, to college and many of our students uh, go abroad. So not necessarily just the United States. We have lots of students who go to the United States, go to Canada, uh, go to universities in Europe. So they have a, a, a whole range of opportunities, and that's a lot of what we do, is ensuring that when our students are done with us, that they've got the opportunities that make sense for them, and it allowed them to be successful in post-secondary opportunities, whatever it is that they, that they choose. 
That is really incredible because sometimes folks don't know the type of education that their children can have here. I remember years ago meeting with people and they were telling me, well, maybe I'll move when my kids graduate from high school or maybe I can do something when, you know, when I don't have to worry about my kids anymore. I raised my children here. And like you said, yeah. I, I had my son, he was four when I moved here and he went all the way through the education system here and he's doing great. He owns his own business, is doing very well. I think he has something like 15 employees. And wow. he's he grew up here, going to school here. So I'm very proud to be able to tell my story now. Whereas before, I couldn't really say anything when folks were like, well, you know, let me wait because the quality of education. And actually, I feel that he really got a, a great, great education going through heritage school so no i agree we're really that. proud of the educational experiences that we offer students um, what we hear from families all the time that some of your viewers might be thinking about one of the concerns that the parents have is if they're coming from the u.s and their children speak english is yes. it's a concern when they when they go into school um, that they don't speak spanish and and one of the things that we do to support with that is although the language of instruction is english we provide students with Spanish as a second language. So in the U.S. schools, a lot of times you'll see English, English as a, as second, a second language. language. We actually provide Spanish, Spanish as a second language so that they can learn the, the social language that they need in Spanish um, to be able to connect with other kids in the classroom because any kid who comes to school wants to uh, feel connected to, to those who are around them. But then in addition to that, we provide lots of support to be able to help families transition. And 45% of our student population is not Dominican. So almost half wow. of our students are coming from other places. We have uh, 34 different nationalities represented in our student population. So you're not alone. And sometimes people might think, oh, if I, I relocate, you know, we're going to be one of, of, of thousands. But there's lots of people who, who've done it. And there are resources available um, to be able to help make that transition smooth. And you're going to find people who are in the same boat as you. That is incredible. So 34 different nationalities in the school? 34 different nationalities. And from places that you might not even imagine. And we have students uh, who are from Asia. We have students who um, their, their parents are, are from different places in Europe. We have a, a, a father who's from Ireland, for example. We have people from Belarus. We have people from all over, the, all over the world. So that is enriching to the student's experience. So not only can you have, you kind of have the best of both worlds because you yes. have access to that American curriculum, which allows you to be able to, to, to come back and forth if you'd like. But then you also are offering your child the exposure to that diversity. Yes. So when a student graduates from, from CCHS, they, they end up having a network that stretches across the world. And what a great opportunity. If you're going to go to Spain, you know somebody there. You're yes. going to go to Venezuela or, or, or Argentina. You, you might know someone there who, who you went to school with at CCHS. So that's a great opportunity, I think, for kids. Yes, and I am living proof of exactly that, what you just said, because my son is now 22, my uh -huh. older son, and the friends that he went to school with, for example, there was a German, there was an Italian, there uh -huh. was a Spanish kid, there, he was the American uh -huh. kid and a Russian kid. I mean, I remember all these kids and he would go to their houses and be in those environments. And at the end of the day, he can understand all of those languages because he yep. spent time in, in those households where they were speaking their language. He could greet you in all of those languages. Literally, when I heard Jalen speaking Russian one day, I was like, <laughs> when did you learn Russian? He's like, Daniel. I'm like, oh, yeah. His, you know, he grew up with Daniel, who's who's a Russian kid, and they learn from each other. And actually, they're all still in contact with each other. Technology, not only regular technology, but they get online and they play their games. Uh -huh. And they're yelling and screaming at each other. It's like, Jill, who are you screaming at? And he's talking with Mario, you know, who's <laughs> in Ecuador or something like that. So they make those connections yeah. and they really, and, and actually he's doing business with one of his friends who is running a business with, with one of his parents. So they're even doing business together, well, young, growing up together, and they have that trust. So that is something that I found was very, very uh, good for him was to have that experience with children who had different cultures. No, absolutely. I think that's one of the gifts that we can give our, our, our yes. kids is to have that, is to have those connections. And another element that I think is unique about our school is that it's a, a small school. So a lot of times, you know, folks are looking on, on the internet and, and researching the Dominican education system. They might 
They might see things that would make them draw conclusions that are erroneous about our schools. Uh, and that's just because on a, on a public level, there are some challenges in the, in, in the public schools here in the Dominican Republic in terms of student yes. achievement. Um, but the independent or the private schools in the country are competitive with schools anywhere else in the world, in the United States and, and Europe. I mean, we even do um, normative testing to see how our students and their achievement, how they rank compared to students in the United States. And our students are on level. And actually, as they get older, a lot of times they begin to pull ahead because of the fact that they have those bilingual brains where they're, they're operating in multiple languages, which has a lot of advantages that it also uh, gives to students. But we have a small school environment. So part of what leads to that connection is the fact that it's not seven sections of a, of a grade level. There's usually one or two. Yes. So the kids have really close relationships yes. with one another. They're connected with the adults in the building. I, I know every single kid's name and, and, and yes. can greet them by name as they come in the door. Um, and and that's parents. fantastic. And the parents too. <laughs> uh, and that's fantastic to, yeah. to, to know who the people are and to feel when your kids are spending time uh, outside of the home, it's the it's the second place where they most spend their time. Yes. You want that to be in a place where people know who they are and, yes. and, and know what they're interested in and who they are as people. And that's something that, that we have that I also think is a, an incredible factor that we're just very fortunate to, yes. to have as a small school. I tell you something, I really feel comfortable in the school. I yeah. see familiar faces. They do call me by my name. They know the kids. You know, it is really warm. And I feel that my children are very well taken care of. People know them everybody yeah. and, and it's it's just like a, a family so uh, how many children are in the school how many so, students so right now we're about 370 students mm -hmm. from preschool through through 12th grade so that that ends up to be approximately class sizes range from 15 to 25 26 students mm -hmm. and at some grade levels there's two sections at some grade levels there's one mm -hmm. um, but there's no group that's larger than than two classrooms uh, mm -hmm. so it's a really nice size uh, it's every year we we grow um, but we really make a conscientious effort to have controlled growth and, and mm -hmm. quality growth making sure that every family that comes in we're prepared to receive them and we have the teachers and the resource and everything set up to be able to receive them and offer every student a high quality mm -hmm. quality education you have dreamed of the perfect Caribbean beach lifestyle. With Boardwalk Developments, we have the blueprint for you in this tropical paradise. Celebrate incredible returns when you elevate your investment portfolio with the hottest real estate in Punta Cana. Invest wisely, live lavishly, We'll show you how. Contact Boardwalk Developments, Punta Cana. Tell us about the process if somebody is interested in enrolling their child or children in the Heritage School. How does that work? So we have a dedicated admissions team that's uh, been with us for quite a few years. And, and their job is to assist families with the admissions process from beginning to end. A lot of times what that starts with is just a, a school tour. One of the things that we're extremely proud of is the infrastructure that the school has, which is really unrivaled in the area and, and unrivaled in, in most cases on the entire island. We have a, a full gym, we have soccer fields, we have basketball, basketball courts, we have a semi-Olympic swimming pool. Uh, we have large, large classrooms that are equipped with technology, laboratories, you name it, we have lots of spaces theater. that are designed to theater. <laughs> we have spaces that are designed um, for an optimal learning experience. So we invite parents who are interested to come take a tour of the school. And as part of that, they have the opportunity to interact with our, our faculty and staff, which I think is, is, is critical for you to know that it's a, a good fit. Mm -hmm. Not every school is a good fit for, for everyone. So we, we ask folks to come and visit, and then we provide them with the admissions packet, which is essentially a one-stop shop for everything that you, you would need. And they're things that you would expect, uh, mm -hmm. like a birth certificate or their grades or a letter of recommendation from the school that they've come from. And we work with families because we are both an American school that's accredited by an international accreditator. We're accredited by Cognia. And we're also accredited by the Dominican Ministry of Education. So in full transparency, sometimes the requirements related to, to the Dominican Ministry of Education can be a little tedious, yes. but that's why we have a team there that's, uh, that, that works with folks. And, and we just ask people to be patient. Sometimes with the, with the bureaucracy, uh, it can be a little slow, the process, but we have folks there who know it. They do this every single year, and yes. they help people get through it. And the eventual benefit for the student is when you graduate from Capcana Heritage School, 
you get two diplomas. You actually get your high school diploma from the Dominican Republic, but you also get a diploma from the United States. So it's a wonderful benefit for, for students who, who are interested in that. That just opens up a range of, of opportunities. If they want to stay in the country and study, they can. Um, or if they're going abroad, they're able to, to show that they've done the, the dual degree program. Um, but anyone who's interested in admissions, I would encourage them to visit our website. Uh, lots of information there, as well as our Instagram page, where you can kind of get a feel of, of mm -hmm. what life is like in the school. And uh, usually within 24 to 48 hours with someone from our team is reaching out to provide all the all the details great great yes yeah. i know my kids love finding themselves on instagram yeah. <laughs> they're like look there i am i have to watch it like 10 times i'm like i saw you i saw you you can say <laughs> i was in a, i was in a classroom yesterday uh, observing you know we're, we're out and about and it was a drama classroom mm -hmm. and they were doing a, a final presentation and the first thing that the kids asked me i recorded it and they go, is this going to go on Instagram? I said, no, 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 not necessarily it's going to go on Instagram. I don't put everything up on Instagram. But we, we try to capture so that parents who aren't in the school every day, uh, they can see what their kids are up to and the different learning experience. Every single one of our specials classes, uh, which by specials I mean physical education, art, drama, um, makerspace, they all have independent Instagram pages. So they're constantly taking photos of what the kids are doing so that the parents can see uh, what they're getting out of those out of those classes. So I, I personally, I love to watch those because I can see things that in the day I might mean, not get a chance to see. And all the wonderful opportunities that the students have, you need a great core content, but a core curriculum, but it's also nice for them to be able to express themselves and to experience mm -hmm. all that those special class have to offer. And a lot of our students, depending on the grade level, it can vary slightly, but they have about seven specials a week. So they have wow. lots of opportunities um, to develop skills in other areas that aren't just reading, writing, and arithmetic. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and also the extracurriculars that are offered after school as well. Yeah, that's something that we've been working on a lot over the mm -hmm. past couple of years. Uh, and I think this is for, for American families who are coming from the, from the U.S. system, there's an expectation that the school have extracurriculars, but also sport opportunities. Yes. And when I very first got to the school, we were, we were just kind of beginning in the area of sports. But now we have uh, an extended day program, which our extended day program begins as early as Nido, which those are the one-year-olds. So they Nidos, can actually Those step. are the babies. Those are the babies. Nest. The cutest. If you're yes. ever having a bad day, uh, you go to Nido and it guaranteed your day will be those better because they're just they're just adorable. But we have an extended day program that starts as early as, as Nido. And then that goes all the way through pre school, then our extended uh, day, which goes from 315 to 415, begins in kindergarten mm -hmm. and goes all the way up to 12th grade. And we also have multiple sports academies that operate in the school after what's after school. So 415 on, uh, we have a basketball academy, we have a soccer academy, a swim academy, we have taekwondo, we have multiple opportunities where if a student's done extracurricular and they're, and they're looking for a higher level of competition, they can participate in those academies. And we actually allow students from outside of the school to be able to participate in those too. So if perhaps they don't have the opportunity to be enrolled in our school, but they can come participate in one of our sports activities uh, and, and engage at a higher level of competition, which we know there's a lot of benefits for academic performance when students are able to be actively involved in, in sports. So we're really proud of that. And we have a, yes. a, a, a campus that's in constant movement movement from 7 a.m. until about 8 p.m. every single day. 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Wow, that is really incredible. And that is a lot. That is a lot of growth. And, and I've seen the evolution. When my oldest was there, he didn't have an opportunity for basketball. And he's tall as a tree. And everybody <laughs> would have been good for the team. Huh? It would have been good for the team. And everybody always asked him, did he play basketball? And, I, and I've thought to myself, well, no, because, you know, there, there wasn't really an opportunity. So now there is that opportunity There's for those really, really tall kids to, play to try it and see if they would be good at it. So I'm so happy and so proud of all of the, the growth and all of the activities and, and the options that are there for the schools yep. academically and, and physically extracurricular everything that that is offered is is really really wonderful many people don't know this but our basketball program is actually run by the NBA we have an NBA basketball school that that operates out of our campus and we're the the regional representatives for all of the Eastern Dominican Republic for NBA so we have a, a, a wonderful general director of that program and he's really elevated the the level of play for our students which has been great and one of the things that we're really proud of this year, uh, I don't know if you saw when we did our celebration, but we participate in the National American School Games. 
And our soccer team actually won second place on a national level. There was even a team from Jamaica that came and played, and our team actually finished second on a national level. So we were Woo! really proud of that. We were really proud yes. of that accomplishment. And it's testament to all of the work that's going on day by day uh, that they're competing at even an international level and, and, and doing well. So that's something yes. that, we're, that we're very proud of. Yes, I've enjoyed being a, a soccer mom and a swim mom and even going to the spelling bee competition in Santo Domingo and all yes. of the activities that that there are for the children to to learn how to compete and be competitive to represent the school Absolutely. to connect with other schools in the area in the country and even have international uh, opportunities is really really great that look at how much is available here did you think that Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic could offer so much to your child for for their education and their growth and development yeah. in, incredible really no, really really incredible Imagine waking up in paradise. Forget about those ordinary all-inclusive resorts. Welcome to Boutique Hotel Las Flores, a secluded oasis in the heart of Punta Cana. Come, let's take a look. So I have to mention this because my kids talk about it. Lunch. So it was several months ago that my daughter came home and she said, do you know that we have a chef in the cafeteria? And I thought, ooh. <laughs> and since then, they always want to eat lunch at school. And before, they never did. Yep. So I got to hear about this chef. So it's actually an initiative that we had this year. I think we've always had a pretty good lunch, but one of the things that, that we heard uh, last year moving into this year from our Parent Teacher Association, uh, which is simply a, a, essentially a group of, of committed parents who volunteer their, their time to represent each grade level, and then they come together once a month, and, and we meet as the school administration with those parents to see what's working well, what could we possibly improve. And the cafeteria uh, ended up being sort of a topic of, of, of conversation. So we decided to, to make some changes. Some of that was with personnel, so we do have a, we have a new chef who's working in our cafeteria. Um, we brought in an outside consultant uh, from Santo Domingo who works with uh, the food industry and does some catering, who gave some, some suggestions on how we could improve our, our menu. So we have a lot more options than we ever did before. So essentially, a, a student who goes to lunch, depending on the day, they essentially have the plate of the day option. Uh, which here in the Dominican Republic a lot of times ends up being uh, rice, a balance. Chicken, yeah, beans. rice, chicken, <laughs> beans, uh, lettuce. But they have lettuce, they have, they have fruit, they have all those different options, and they can make their plate essentially however it is that, they, that they'd like with a protein and a carbohydrate and, and with fruits and vegetables. And then we also typically have either a salad bar, a wrap bar, or a pasta bar where a, a student would like to have pasta with bread sauce and bacon they can do that, or they can they can essentially make it to order however it is that they that they'd like, um, and that has been well received by all of the students, the teachers too, who are eating from the cafeteria most days, and our PTA has reported a lot of progress on that. So that's one of the things that we saw as an area that we could work on. We addressed it, and we're really proud of the the results. Yeah, and you addressed it, and how yeah. I remember my older son Jalen, he used to say, "Mom, I'm tired of rice and chicken and beans," yeah. and my little guy is the pickiest eater you could ever imagine. I mean, this kid, he is so picky <laughs> and he loves the pasta. And they, you know, I just have to say that that is really great that you took the feedback you made some changes and really great changes. There's, so. a, there's a Dominican expression that uh, one who doesn't eat doesn't think. Uh, and, it, <laughs> and it makes a lot of sense. It's an idiom here that's very common, but it makes a lot of sense. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to make sure is, is that the kids are, are with us from 8 o'clock in the morning until 3, sometimes 4.15 in the afternoon. They, they need to eat. They need to, have, they need to nourish their bodies so yes. that they can do the, the learning in the classroom. So we want to make sure that they eat, and we want it to be a nutritious, a nutritious meal. Uh, so that's one of the things that we've tried to – it's a battle, as all parents know, right? Having yes. it be nutritious and also something that they, that they want to eat. But we're constantly you know, coming up with different options to try to make sure that they're, that they're enjoying the food and they're, they're eating at that time. And you have success with that because, Thank believe you. me, I have the pickiest eater, and he <laughs> is eating very, very well at school. That's great. And I'm happy about that. And then they, you know, they go long days into the after school activities and the academies and all of that with all of those programs that you have there too. That's right. Talk about technology. Tell me about what you're doing with technology. 
Yeah, so over the over the past couple of years, one of the things that, that we've done, sort of a basic element with technology is is that we have Wi-Fi across the campus. So we have, mm-hmm. have Wi-Fi in every single area. And we have starting in upper elementary, our students, it's a one-to-one device school, which is which what that means is is that students come to school with their laptop. Uh, and a lot of the, the instruction and the activities are being done through the medium of a digital learning platform, and they're being shared with students through Google Classroom. So upper elementary into our secondary program, almost everything is done on the, on the computer, and the students are learning those, those basic digital uh, citizenship skills that they need um, to be able to move on. Because as, as we all know, uh, we all have a, a smartphone and, and, yes. and, and a computer that we use to be interconnected. So our students work with that. And then in addition to that, we have some, some programs. We have a makerspace program as well as a robotics extracurricular and uh, academy program. So people from the outside, a lot maybe don't know that, but we have a program called Tech Kids. So if they're not enrolled in our school, but they'd like to participate in the academy, they can. It's after 4.15 in the afternoon. And it's also part of our extracurriculars. And, and in that class, the students learn how to program and to actually work with, with, with robots. And we've had a lot of kids who've just absolutely loved that. And we know that science, technology, engineering, mathematics, that's the way of the future. Yes. And we want our students to be able to be exposed to those opportunities. In the day-to-day work in, in our classroom, we've had a new challenge, which you know, folks in education are, are talking about. There's a new challenge, which is we've moved a lot towards incorporating technology. Uh, but we have these new challenges that have come up today with like artificial intelligence or copy and paste and, and trying to make sure that we have a balance between the, the work that you do, you know, hand and paper versus the work that you do on, on, on the computer. So although we emphasize technology and we use a lot of it, in some cases we'll actually go to notebook, pen, paper, because we want to make sure that the students are developing those critical thinking skills um, that if they're, they're just quickly copying and pasting something, although they're digital natives, which is different than, than, than us than where us, we didn't grow up yes. with, with a computer, we want to make sure that they have the balance between those mm-hmm. two things. And we encourage our families outside of the school to try to to limit that exposure to mm-hmm. to screens and, and to technology. And one of the things that, for your viewers, I think is of interest is we're so lucky here in Punta Cana where we can be out and about. You can yes. you can go home and in the afternoon, um, almost always we have wonderful weather and you can be outside and you can enjoy outdoor activities or extracurriculars that, that the Punta Cana area offers you. Mm-hmm. And we have a limited homework policy as a school. So yes. we work with students during the day and we work hard until the end of the day, but we want them to go out at the end of the day and spend time with their families. We want them to participate in activities that are interesting to them because it's all about balance and mm-hmm. quality of life. And that's something that I think for those of us who are adults in this area, we realize that, but for kids that are growing up here, Punta Cana offers quality of life that you don't necessarily get in other places where nine months out of the year, you might be closed in. I know, I know. And right. this is a change, so many changes over the years. I, me being a parent since 2007 and seeing all of the changes and all of the growth, and I'm very confident that the school will continue to evolve and grow and be ahead of, of the game. No homework. Did you hear that? No homework. And that is really nice because I know that there were years when the kids would be kind of so bogged down with like an hour of homework for each class. There's not even enough hours in the evening. And now they finish their homework or their their schoolwork at school. Now, they still have to do 30 minutes of reading and those kind of things, but they definitely don't come just bogged down with homework. And I right. think that's great. And I, and I feel that the education has not missed a beat. I Actually, think it's a matter of quality over quantity. Yes. So if you're, you're having quality learning experiences during the day and we're taking advantage of all those instructional minutes during the day and doing that responsibly, we can get the work done during the day. And a lot of times, like you mentioned, kids were going home with the homework and, oh and parents were trying to you know, help them figure it out. And it was actually creating this pressure cooker of stress, stressful for the parents, stressful for the kids. And that wasn't in the best interest of their learning. So having the limited homework, you mentioned reading, we really emphasize the importance of reading every night. Um, and that's throughout the school and reading being a family-based 
focused activity, parents yeah. reading with their kids to create that culture of learning at yeah. home that's so important, but not doing the sort of frivolous let's do homework just to do homework or for people to think, oh, I filled out three books this year. That's not the idea. It's definitely a matter of quality experiences in the time of the school day. Yes. And something that I can uh, attest to, even with the reading, there's some variability and creativity with it because my daughter is on Duolingo learning German (laughs) because she said that counts. It does count. We want them to be reading things that are actually of interest to them, Mm -hmm. Um, not just sort of, you know, saying, no, you you have to read this. Because again, one of the things that you'll see about our mission as a school is that we want our students to be lifelong learners. And and a lot of times in missions, you know, people say things that maybe they don't necessarily live out, but that's very much, we try to be an example of that. I mean, the, the adults that work in the building, myself included, we're always learning. We're trying to learn new things. We're trying to, to always be better. And we want to be that example for the students. And we want them to be learning. And you're not going to learn something if you're not interested in it. So student right. interest drives a lot of what we do, even from the really, really little children, our students who come in at, at one year old and they work their way up. Their interest drives a lot of our curriculum. There's always that space for, we know what it is that they need to know and be able to do, but if we can connect that to something that's of interest to them, we want to do that because that's going to lead to more formidable learning experiences Mm -hmm. that are going to stick with them Mm -hmm. long-term. Yes, yes. I think that's really, really beautiful. And I like going to the schools, speaking of reading and reading a book to the kids and and doing those activities. One of our mystery readers? Yes, (laughs) yes. I showed up, read a book to the kids. It was really fun. I really like doing that. They love the mystery readers. They really look look forward to having guests come in. And it's great to see the parents actively participating in in what's going on in the classroom. So thank you for doing that. Yes, yes. That was was really awesome. And just really, I'm so happy with everything that's going on at the school and so happy to have you here to talk about it because I talk about it but I definitely can't talk about it like you can talk about everything that Heritage School offers and there are even activities and events and programs that the school does like International Day that we get involved with every year and community charity events that we do and connect with with the community can you tell us a little more about those yeah community events are are an incredibly important aspect of the school um, for lots of different reasons. One is we have quite a few uh, activities that are that are tradition, that even before my time, they got started at the school and we've tried to provide continuity um, because that's something that the kids, the kids look forward to mm-hmm. e- each and every year. So some examples of those activities that we do, as we spoke earlier about the cultural diversity at the school, we actually have an entire week dedicated to culture and mm-hmm. that culminates with an international festival where our families set up booths uh, with cultural representations as well as food from the different countries represented in the community. So you can make it through about half of them and you're full, but <laughs> it's a wonderful activity and it actually, it serves as a, a fundraiser for our parent teacher association that then uses those funds to be able to contribute back to student activities at the school. After that, we have our magical Marlin Monday, which is in December, which is where we welcome the, the Christmas season and we, mm-hmm. we light our Christmas tree that day mm-hmm. and the kids get to do uh, different manual activities. They, this year they decorated, they got they had pictures with Santa or they mm-hmm. could take a picture with our school, uh, our school mascot. mascot that was dressed up in pajamas and, yes. and a Santa hat. So they really, they really enjoyed that. And then we are a school in the Dominican Republic. So in February, which is when the, the Dominicans mm-hmm. celebrate their Independence Day, uh, we actually have an entire week dedicated to Dominican culture, uh, where they try different Dominican food. They celebrate a carnival event as as the culminating event on that Friday. Um, They get to experience different games, sports, all different elements of, of the Dominican culture. And then we have our family day. Uh, which mm-hmm. we actually we just, just had, had recently. Yeah, we just had the family day recently. And that's an opportunity for the families to get together and to eat and to have fun. We, we also hold a bingo that day, which lots of families And a enjoy. talent show? And a talent show. Wow, so we had some, some yeah. serious talent. Singers, dancers, <laughs> The kids musicians. are so cute. They oh were my so gosh. cute. We're preparing for that. So we had our talent show. And then in, in this time of the year, you know, getting to be May and, and June, it's all about celebrations. Yes. And, and I think an important element of a school is that you have joy, that, that you're having fun together, and that you're celebrating the, the success of students. So we celebrate our kindergartners that are moving on to first grade. Yes. 
Yes. We celebrate our fifth graders that are transitioning to the, the big building, the secondary yes. building in, in sixth grade. We celebrate our eighth graders who finished middle school and are now transitioning to, to grades nine through 12 to high school. And then we have our big, big main Woo! event, which is our senior graduation yes. uh, for those who are finishing their time with us and they're moving on. And we want them to, to celebrate everything that they as a class learned uh, at our school and to go forward to be good representatives of, of that yes. Marlin spirit. Right, because once a Marlin, always, always a Marlin. A Marlin. Yes. <laughs> exactly, I know, you know, I know. Wow. If you want to get rich in real estate, download my PDF. I know there's also the Caja del Amor that the kids always at home, they're bringing things like canned goods and rice and gifts for families in the local community who are in need. Yes, that's right. I think community service is another, is another element, especially as our students get into our secondary school. They have lots of opportunities to contribute to others. And one of those is the Caja del Amor mm -hmm. that you mentioned. Um, and we, whole school, we collect non-perishable items. Mm -hmm. And our older students actually package those up. And then we go with the students to communities, <clears throat> essentially on the outskirts of, of Punta Cana, to deliver those to mm -hmm. families in need. And that's something that's really important to us. Our core, our core values as a school are leadership, wisdom, and integrity. And, and yes. part of being a leader and also being a person of integrity, I think, is not just keeping your gifts for yourself, but actually going out and sharing with others. So we actually have as a graduation requirement that you need to complete 72 hours of, of community service wow. in order to graduate. So we take students out and we want them to be able to see the, the reality out there for some people in, in this country, in the Dominican Republic, and to make sure that they keep that commitment to, to service and that commitment to others. And, and that's a, a pretty key element of our program. And I love that that is a part of the school that the school teaches that we do something also in one of my companies Keller Williams where we have a red day and we go out into the community and we go to the yeah. orphanages and it's nice sometimes I take the kids and they have their activities at school so they're always thinking about giving and I really love that my daughter as she outgrows her clothes she puts them aside actually so that we can package them and get them ready to pass them on to somebody who can really make use of of them so I love that they're feeling feeling that and they're doing that on their own they have that sense of giving that's great that they're empowered and, yes. and, and even the the smallest children a lot of times come up with these wonderful ideas of how they can give back to others and they're aware uh, yes. that there are some things that that they have that that other children aren't as fortunate to have yes. so i think that's great another thing that that happened this past year is we actually had a group of our secondary students form what's called an interact rotary club which oh. is essentially a version of Rotary that's for high school students. So they created their own chapter of, of Interact and they've been planning community service projects uh, across the Eastern region of the Dominican Republic. So they're, uh, they did it as being students, but on their own, but it's one other example of our students really being empowered and having an impact on the greater oh, nice, and the greater community. Nice. So we're proud of that. Yeah, I'll have to connect with that. I don't have high schoolers yet, but they will be. They'll be getting school. there. Yeah, I got like 10 more years to go in the school. <laughs> so I'm excited to continue to be involved with what's going on at the school. As a part of the show, we always take a question from the community. So let me see. Uh, sure. What we have here, go ahead and choose one of the questions. All right. <clears throat> Want me to read it? I can read Give it. Me a read up. It? Go ahead. Yeah, it says, How do you help kids transition? to an international school. I assume that the spirit of this question is, you know, when students who are coming to us for the first time, it might be their first experience outside of their home country, how is it yes. that we support them? And the support begins from the admissions process that we talked about earlier. Yes. Um, them having a chance to get to the school, to get to know people. When they're older students who, who the transition can sometimes be a little bit more difficult, by the time they even get to school, they've already met who their guidance counselor is. They've already mm -hmm. met the, the, the principal and they know who those adult mm -hmm. faces are. And a lot of times we connect them with what would essentially be like a mentor student. So mm -hmm. someone who the first day they're introduced to that student, it's another student who's in their grade level and they're gonna help them in the first couple of days of figure out where the classes are, follow their schedule, any mm -hmm. of the resources that they might need. We have a very robust counseling team. Mm -hmm. Counseling, we have a character education 
program um, that's actually part of the schedule. So every single one of our, our, our students actually goes to a class where their guidance counselor is present. And a lot of that is to make sure that guidance and counseling team is in touch with the social emotional wellness of the students and knows the group and knows the group dynamic because we want to ensure that there's never anyone who, who feels isolated. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that, that, that students are working on those personal relationships. And that class is, is designed to do that, but then it also creates a feedback loop where the counselor can then reinforce with the teachers who are working with that group yes. of students, you know, keep an eye on, so even I'm in the front of the building greeting the kids uh, most days on their, on their way in the building, and I can tell when somebody's off. Yes. And I'll connect with the guidance counselor and say, hey, please go and check up on the student. So we try to be as proactive as we can possibly be, and that's at the beginning, but then that's also every day, even Throughout. when they've been with us for, for years. Yeah. It was similar to, to when we talked about if you're, if you're not nourished in the sense of you haven't had a good meal or, or a good snack, you can't learn. If you're stressed or you don't feel that you belong or you, you have a situation that's affecting you emotionally, you also are, are going to have a difficult time learning. So we want to make sure that, that there's adults who are positioned in a strategic way to be able to support every student at the beginning when they first transition, but then also uh, every day in and out to make sure that they can be their, their best and, and realize yes. their full potential. Yes, and I've noticed that too. I've noticed that counselors actually there were, for example, Miss Mabel. I, I, she's she's been there forever. She, she was has. like teacher when my daughter was in Nido, one years old, and and is still there and and knows my daughter very very well. Yes. And so if there's anything, she contacts me, and I feel like I have a partner. I actually feel like there's somebody there who actually knows my daughter, where she has come from, where she might be going, what she might be, be dealing with. Right. And I see her all the time when I go to the school, she's always around. So yes. I really love that. And that is something that I don't know if all schools have, but I definitely feel like there, there is an ally, not, not just the teacher for that year, yep. but somebody who has been there throughout the years and knows the children as they're growing up. So I, and I appreciate that too, some of the consistency that there are people in, in the school who have been there since day one. That makes a big difference. <laughs> one of the questions that we ask students on our survey, we give students an annual survey, and one of the questions is, is there a, an adult in the building who you feel cares about you? And that's such an important question mm -hmm. because it's, it's beyond just what you learn. Do, do they teach you? But does that person actually care about you? And then the follow-up to that is, do you have someone that you could go to uh, mm -hmm. if you had some sort of problem? Yes. And those are two things that's very common now to talk about bullying as, as yes. an example. It's a very common topic and it's a concern that a lot of parents have. And personal relationships and connection are the, the greatest ally in limiting bullying. Yes. Uh, because people who feel isolated or, or people who feel that they're, that they're being rejected, obviously they start to have a negative, a negative experience in, in, in school. So by emphasizing that, we think that's the best possible strategy for making sure that students feel that they that yes. they belong and that they're well and when they're well they're able to to be successful yes. in school incredible incredible listen i could not say more about the capcana heritage school my experience there being a parent there from 2007 and still with like nine years to go, I will be there. I will be nowhere else. If anybody ever asks me about schools, I, I am a champion for that school. I've seen the evolution, the new programs, the attention to detail, everything. And I feel actually better about having my children in that school. I can literally say that now then even having them in school, let's say in America, because I've had a child to go through that school and he's well-rounded, he's yep. respectful, he's intelligent. I mean, everything a parent would want a child to be. I can, I can testify to that. He's 22. I mean, and doing I'm, well. I'm doing so, well. so, so proud of him. Yes. And I, I know that Cap County Heritage School played a really important role in that and happy with what I'm seeing, even with my younger kids in fifth and third grade now going to the next grades. And this is where we will be. So I thank you, your thank staff, you. your leadership, the, the school system and everything for the vision and what you've done, your focus on excellency, 
really, I just want to say thank you to you. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me on. And I encourage anyone who's watching this podcast who's interested in learning more, please visit our website, uh, uh, connect with us. And we'd we'd love to share with you more about our school and learn about you, your family, and your children uh, to be able to help you if you are transitioning to Punta Cana for that to be uh, a great move for the entire family. Amazing. Amazing. So how can they reach you? What are those... Uh, email or Instagram? Our, our website is www.cchs.edu.do. Okay. And there's a, a link there that'll come directly we'll have to, a link. directly we'll have to a link us. In we'll the have description. a link <laughs> a, a available to you um, so that you can connect with us. And we look forward to hearing from you. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Garvey, for being here with us today. My pleasure. And thank you to you for joining us on this episode of the Punta Cana Podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, comment, and let us know what you think of this episode. Or do you feel differently now than you did before seeing this episode when it comes to considering if you might move here or have your child in the school system in Punta Cana? Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. 